Dr. Mark and Dr. Solomon. Welcome. And thank you for the assignment. Uh, you guys have done a remarkable work. As in, I, I was so happy when I saw uh, the solutions. And also, even the last class work of yesterday, I have seen certain concepts. A lot of persons are bringing so many things, and it's amazing as well. So I think uh, we are getting to understand the whole concept of coding. It has to do with problem solving, try to figure out something. And most especially, you know that you're not just copying. Just, you actually know what those schools are actually doing. There are different ways in which you can come around to solve a particular problem. So the main thing is for you to understand the syntax behind what you're actually doing, not just blind code, just blind copying and testing. It's not going to help you in the future because when you get to real life challenges, uh, someone like me that I've gotten to see things myself when it comes to the clients bringing in certain things, they say this is how they want it. And Hello, you can anyone hear me? I can't hear anything. Okay. Can anyone hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Mr. Solomon, please. Uh, sorry, Mr. Sunday. How far? Can you hear me now? Oh, I can't hear you. Maybe his mic is. Can you hear me, Mr. So Mr. Sunday? Hello, Mr. Sunday. Oh, I think uh, log log out and get back in. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so I was actually appreciating you guys for submitting the assignment. And those that have taken permission to at least extend, there is no problem. I will, those that have given you each of the deadline for you to try as much as possible to do that. And it's it's going to be something remarkable when it comes to how many persons started and look at how how we are right now. It's part of I knew it was going to be like this. It's something I had already envisioned. Even the likes of uh, when we thought that you saw some people that you feel that will be at the end of this particular uh, edition, you see that they are falling out, not because they don't want to learn, but because I think one of the things that we lack in terms of online uh, courses like this is consistency. And it's not just only you could see. I think if you look at statistics and... I went to a, an Udemy course and I looked at the reviews of that particular uh, course and it was more of like almost 20,000 reviews. But I went to the exercises that people submitted, like people that are actually doing the hands-on practical. I looked at it, it was even up to, is it 102 as at then? And with 2,000, 20,000 plus reviews of that course is great, that course is great. So people are not actually putting in the work to do coding. That's a problem that people are really having when it comes to uh, learning things like this. Coding is something that you have to do. You just have to do it. That's the thing. So I, I think at this stage, some persons will still be eliminated. Let's see who, how many persons will still be left. And if it's at the end, we only finish one person, it's only one person that is going to get it. There's no problem. It's the speed edition, and I just want something that once you get out of this, once you finish this course, you know that, yes, you actually know what you're doing. And you can see all the things that I've done, the assignments I've given, the projects I've given, all of them are interrelated with so many with other things that we have done. If you really look at those uh, uh, words, like all those projects that I've done, all the exercises that we do, it, it, all of them are interrelated. So if you don't have a foundational knowledge of what we started since we started, it will not really make a whole lot of sense to you. So let's just go straight to what we have today. I'll try as much as possible to be fast. It seems that when the when the classes are hello, okay, when the classes are that long, it tends to maybe some persons tend to like 
please mute yourself. Uh, Dr. Kwemi, you're unmuted, please. Okay, I muted you. Uh, so let's try and be fast. And at this particular before, before we continue, I have, I have a quick question. I would like okay, to okay. ask. Yes, so let me quickly ask. When, when it comes to coding, what is more important? Is it the end result or the process to get to that end result? That's the question I have. Okay. Okay, first of all, it depends on the it depends on where you're actually coming from. For example, um there are certain clients that will tell you, okay, I want to see your I want you to send me the results of my, the particular things I've said you should do for me. But this is a practical example for me, like a practical example. So is there some clients that will tell us, okay. Uh, please, I need you to give me the, the Python script itself as well. As you're giving me the results, I need to see the Python script itself so that I can use it. Maybe in the future, I want to use it in, in maybe to solve a particular problem. And there's, there are also some clients that, that are just interested with the results. They just want the results from whatever you have. They, they don't care how you manipulate it, but once this, the result they want to get, it should be as they, they have told you. They don't care how you manipulate it. Even though you take it one step at a time, maybe I spend uh, days to do it. They don't care how you can, how you get it. The main thing is for you to get their results for them. But there are some clients that will need the process. They'll need to see, show them how you got your work done. What's going on? Oh, you seeing the, the screen is moving, but can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So uh, I don't know why the screen is moving up and down. I don't know if someone has also observed it as well. But Okay. I hope someone is not trying to hack in again, please. So there are some clients that will, there are some clients that will tend to want to see the end result, the only the product. There are some ones that want to see the process. So the main thing for me, the main thing for me as a programmer as you're beginning is something that you have to know what you're actually doing. You have to actually put yourself in the project. I think Dr. Dr. Payne, I think you're the one just try to beat yourself. So there's some clients that will need, I told you already, there's some clients that will need that. And But for me, I will always advise you to know what you're actually doing, the process you're taking, each step of the way. That's why I actually recommend that you comment on your code every time you're coding or you're trying to do something or you're uploading something on GitHub or anyway. So that's one will actually see the, the way forward. Uh, how I wish we find a way to know how to get into social media marketing and the rest. We could have been so exposed to so many things. Our codes could have seen, could have gotten to the limelight or maybe we will see it more. The audience could have been better. Maybe we'll, maybe when you are finished, you should try to get a course on uh, marketing as well. One of the things that we do here in Abuja here is we, it's more freelancing. So my boss is really into, he knows how to get clients. So he knows the marketing strategies, how to position himself so that he, People can actually reach out to him and get clients from different parts of the world. I told you the last review that we got, we we have gotten in Nigeria, we've gotten up to 21% uh, percent nomine, uh, like in, uh, domination when it comes to the, what we do, when it comes to data extraction, uh, machine learning, and data science work jobs. So for that, for that particular domination, it means that this marketing strategy is making a whole lot of sense. And the reviews for our percentage is 96 points. Was it 90? Yes, 96 points something then. So you see how we're going. We have only had seven uh, clients that have given us bad reviews. Like you said, they had, I think most of them were just canceled once. They, they said they don't want to, to, to continue with the projects anymore. So that's why they are actually, they told us, okay, 96%, but not 100% now. But so far we have been doing wonderful. I have a fantastic team as well. So you just have to know what you actually want. Sometimes you have to look at the product itself. Sometimes you look at the process. So for me, especially, I will always advise you to always know what you are doing in the process, okay? I think that's the way I can answer. So let's just uh, go straight to what we have today. I will just share my screen. I hope Dr. Kwemi, have I been able to clarify that? I'm just giving you from a practical point of view, like someone that is. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
Uh, I'll be sharing my screen as well. So we will start from where uh, we stopped before. Uh, okay, I think we're we're actually going. We're actually moving to. We have done creating a list with range function. We have done that in the last class. So we are going to objects and values. We'll try to rush up to objects and values. Is statement analyzing list as a function argument and metrics operation. So let's see how we can make that possible tonight. Please, at any point you do not understand, we can always uh, mute yourself and say something. Because once I share my screen, I tend not to see your hands being raised, okay? So let's just go straight and let's see how we can make it work. Okay, so I open this and let's see. So what the first thing we're going to look is objects and values. I remember when we were trying to create something when it comes to uh, total, we, we, we instantiated a, please mute yourself. We instantiated a particular kind of object and we now named, we said that that particular object is being used and is a more of like an object oriented programming kind of concept. But nevertheless, you still understand it here. There, even though we have not gotten to the OOP yet, that is object oriented programming. So this is for storing things in objects and, and putting giving it a value. So the very first one we're going to look at is A, which is a variable name. A is equals to Apple, and Apple here is a string, and B is also equals to Apple. But if you look at the object that we have that is being stored there, that is A and B, you can see they have the same value here. Please pay attention, it's very important. So if you look at the ID of A, it gives you what it's the same thing as the ID of B because the value here is actually what the same. So if you look at the equality check here, which is always equals equals to A equals equals B, which is going to give us return a Boolean value. When it says Boolean value means uh, a true or false. Okay. So by the time we get this done, you, can, you are going to see that it's going to give us true. That's for the value itself. And if we look at the identity check as well, which is going to look at the ID of it, the way it is being stored in the system that you are, we are being defined in Python. So the ID of A and the ID of B, the identity check is also true. So in Python, these two variables, A and B, they have the same, the same values. Yes, it's true because they're Apple and Apple. And they are immutable, surely immutable they are because they are strings. So since their values are the same and they are immutable, Python did not do what, did not create a separate variable. Instead, it assigned both to the same address to save what memory, okay? So it has said, it put them in the same memory, the same address to do what, to save memory. But what if we change this B to what, instead of Apple, we change it to orange. By the time we, Take the ID of A and the ID of B, you can see it is now very different because the address has been has been saved somewhere else. And the address has been saved to another memory. So for now, A and B are not the same variable at all. So since we changed the, the value of B, Python has created a new address, which is the ID itself for B. So now if we check A equals equals B, that's a quality check. It will turn to what false. The same thing with what ID, it will also turn to false. But let's look at the concept of list. Let's see list as a practical example here. X is one, two, three. Y is also one, two, three. If we print X and Y, it's going to give us the same thing, one, two, three. Now let's check for the values. Yes, X and X equals equals Y is going to give us true. And but now look at something here. The ID of X and the ID of Y is actually different. Why is it true? If someone could actually tell me why is it true? There were two conditions I gave here. Look at it. Look at these two conditions that I gave. So why do you think the ID here is different from that of what the same thing we did for strings? Please look can just tell me, looking at what we've done, just happened now. Why is the ID different, but it has the same? Uh, why do you think the IDs are different? Uh, just give me 
a minute. I think one one train, and the other is a list. Yeah, no table. Okay. Um. Yes, Mr. Kun. So well done. Well done. Uh, please raise up your hand if yeah, you want to say something. New table. Who is saying something now? I want to know. Mr. Hello. Sponge, is that you? No. I just want to talk because they are mutable and it's possible we can change one element in from another. So the possibility oh, okay. of changing one. Okay, they are mutable. I can remember when Mr. Futsu said something like that. They are mutable, they are least because they are mutable. Well done. Well done. Okay. Okay. So that's true. Mr. Tosin, you have all that I, I want to add something to it. Yes, aside mutability, uh, this okay. is an issue that I feel they are okay, also um, saved in different, uh, the memory it takes is different. Okay, okay, fantastic. The memory, the memory system is what the I mean, memory address is different. So that's a, that's a nice point of memory view. Memory address. The memory what? Memory address, address. Okay, memory address is also different. Thank you very much for trying that out. So let's see it here. You can see that the ID is different, but the, the value here is X equals equals is what Y. Now let's see why it's why it's why it's uh, like this because this is what we call the this is when the object comes in here. This is where the object comes in. That is the object. That is the ID itself. Equality is what it is not the same thing as what value. It is not the same thing as value when it comes to when it comes to immutable, immutable kind of uh, data structures. You can see here x equals equals to uh, the y check is equality, and it checks the values of two variables. This particular one checks the values of two variables, but this other one checks the what the two address if it's identical IDs, and once it is not stored in the same memory. Is going to return what as what false because they are what immutable. They are, sorry, they are mutable kind of data structure. I, I think I think you just this you may not really need it. That's some, some of this concept that you may not really so so far as the data scientists have not really gotten to like uh, get to use them in the nearest in the so far. But I, I believe it's something that when it comes when it, this course as far as this course is concerned. We are taking it step by step. I want to understand every concept that has to do with programming and it comes to do with Python itself. So that's why I'm actually making this, uh, coming up with certain things and adding things to it. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is, is, is statement. A statement is something that has to do with uh, value comparison, almost the same thing as um, uh, the objects and, val uh, objects and values here. So you can see here when it comes to object comparison, it has to do with identical. But when it comes to value comparison, it has to do with equality check. Okay, so let's just let's continue with from what we have done so far. But defining another list, A is equal to one, two, three, four, five. B one, two, three, four, five as well. The value of A and B definitely they are the same, but the ID of A and B are definitely not the same because they are not stored in the same word. And are not stored in the same uh, ID address. They are not stored in the same in the same object ID uh, address. Okay. So the same. The other thing is that we, we can also use this uh, statement as we mentioned because this is the concept of this particular thing we are going. The E statement. So if A is if A is B, if A is B is going to tell you that it is what it is what false. Now the same thing that happens for string. You can look at this. S is a, S one is equal to computer. S two is equal to computer, and S equals equals S two is going to give us true. And also S one is S two is going to give us true. Why is this so? Because they are what they are immutable and they are stored in the same address. They are stored in the same address, and because it is a what a string. Okay, so you can see. But if it was for a list, it was quite what different okay so the same thing happens to so we can if we change s2 to computer 2 and check it again it's going to be false because the id address has been changed because computer 2 is not the same thing as 
the string of computer. So by the time we get it, this done is S1, S2 is equals to going to be false. Another data structure that is immutable is the integer itself, not the list. The integer itself, like each of those particular uh, numbers, A is equals to two, B is equals to two. So you can see it's also the same thing here. Um, okay. And this particular one, okay, something is actually, uh, what do you call it here? Integers are actually what's quite different. This is this is more of like uh, an exception when it comes to, uh, what do you call it? Let me let me try to get it here. Let me try to, let me remember what we did here. So you can see here, this is actually very true because they are almost the same thing as what the strings itself. So we can see here almost the same thing because of their immutability. So by the time you get this, A, A is what B is also the same thing. It's going to return true. But immediately you change B to what three, which is not the same as two here, is going to do what? Give us the what? False. Just as what? Because of the, the main thing you should look at is anytime you are going to look at this uh, particular values and objects, you should look at the, is that particular data structure mutable or immutable? If it's mutable, the object is going to be different. But if the object address is going to be different, but if it is immutable, just like what you have done for strings and, and integers, and they have the same values, if the ID, the object ID will be what will be the same. But once it is mutable, which for example, the list, the object ID, the address that has been signed as the object is going to be what different, even though they have the same uh, values that you feel that they have, it's going to be quite different. Okay, at this point, I will stop to ask to check if anybody has questions. Okay, <laughs> so if there are no questions, uh, permission to carry on, permission to carry on, okay. This one person should confirm that I should carry on. Otherwise, we we we'll go back to what permission granted. Permission granted. Okay. Permission granted. All right. Let's go. Let's continue. Okay. Let's continue, please. Okay. I can see another confirmation. Okay. So I continue. So what I will go now to is, and I know some of you might not hear this as well. The next concept is called aliasing, and this particular one is something that I was trying to say that is very very important. You are going to see a whole lot of it when you are getting into data science as well, and maybe you are into more of into object oriented programming. For those of you that will be going to the future, you might be going to game development, and you are also going to see it practically in this course as well. By the time we build games and the rest, so aliasing means different names referring to the same object. For example. X is equals to object A. That same um, name Y is also referring to the same object what A. So since X and Y refers to the same object A, they are what aliases. They are what aliases. So we can see X and Y are for aliases because they are referring to the word the same object. Okay. So in Python types, we have what we call we have. I think this is more of like something that is uh, like a, a, a constant. They are called primitive, there are certain Python types that are called primitive types, and there are some that are also called non-primitive types. So example, like the primitive types are those ones that have existed before now, and it's something that has more of like, it doesn't come together. They come, they, 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 they exist independently. For example, integers, floats, strings, and bool, they're always coming like, if they want to come out in itself, they're always standing on their own. As for example, like we have seen the integer, like two, can see strings, they are just, just characters inside a quotation. So non-primitive, they're always more of like a group. Uh, for example, list and diction, dicks and tuple. We have not looked at dictionary and tuple yet. We are still going to get into that. And, Remember, I, I remember I think I said something about, you have worked on dictionary at some point. I've mentioned something like dictionaries are more of like key value pairs. They have a key and that particular key, it has a what a value and all of them are coming together that are separated by commas and they always come with the coily brackets as well. Don't worry, we are getting there. And also tuple, tuple are, are more of like that. The, okay, I'll get back to you guys. Just excuse me, just like 30 seconds.
Okay, when I, sorry for that. Uh, so when I said tupu, I think I stopped at tupu. Uh, tupus are more of like list, but in this particular one, they are not mutable, just like list. List are mutable, but tupus are not mutable. They are more, they are like list. They have sequences and as well, but in terms of a square bracket, they come in form of what a, a normal bracket itself. That is the open and close by the normal parentheses that we have. So we look at different uh, primitive types. Look at different primitive types here. You can see x as the integer here, y. And now look at what we have just done now. Y is equals to x. You can see we define x equals to 24. And that same y, this y also is also referring to what x. So if you want to check x equals equals y, you see that X, X, X equals equals Y is going to give you true. And if you check X is Y, is also going to give you true. Now, something remarkable happens here. This is the part that we always want to see how it works for us. So we can see if Y, we say Y is equals to 40. We say Y is equals to 40. And I said, okay, uh, let's, uh, let's reassign Y. X, y is equals to 40. And we put X and then I said, X equals equals Y. Is it true? Is going to return what false. X is Y is also going to return false. Now, please pay attention to the difference. Now, what is going to happen now? Please pay attention. Now, let's see something like this for the non-primitive type. A is equals to A is equals to one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? That same A, B is equals to A. But if you now check the equality check, yes, it's going to be true. The identical check is for the ID itself, so which is A is B, is definitely true. Now, if you want to print A and B, we are also, it's going to also give us the same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, for the non-primitive type, look at what is going to happen. Now, let's change B to, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, we change it to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. By the time we do that, we print it, you can see they are what, they are kind of what different now. Now, what if we mutate B? What if we do what? We change B. Let's see what will happen. Now, let's, let's now work on the analyzing itself. Let's see what we are going to happen. A is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes. And B is equals to A. A equals equals B. It's definitely true. A is B. Definitely true. Now, B is definitely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, let's try and mutate B. And let's see what will happen. Now, B, we are looking at the indexing now. So the first index we are looking at, we want to change it to capital A. And the second index, which is 1, we want to change it to capital B. Now, if we say B is, if we call out B now, it's going to give us A, B, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, let's check A. Let's check A itself. A, when we now check A, you can see now it has also, if you want to check A, it's also going to give us what? A, B, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't know if you have seen the difference now. I don't know if anybody has seen the difference. Who can tell me is there any difference now? So anything that we do, anything that we try to mutate for for uh, for B, since we have put it as the same object, A and B are, have the same object value. So anything you do for anything you do to change for A, for B is also going to change for what for A. So that's what aliasing does. And it's very, very important when it comes to coding as a, as a whole. So if you can see A is equals to B, A cos equals B, that is a quality check, is going to give us true. And A is B is also going to give us what? True. I don't know if you understand what I've just happened. So for mutable types, mutation does not break aliasing. You can see that for mutable types, mutation does not break what? Aliasing, but for immutable types, it actually does break it. So you can see A and B are still the same object because we mutated word B. So that's what I can actually tell you at this particular point. Let's try. Is there any questions so far? Should I continue? Any questions? Uh, oh, no. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Any other person to confirm that I should move forward? There's question. 
Okay, there's a question. Okay, Mr. Tosin, is that you? Okay, ask your question. I, I really do not get the difference between the... I want the video again, don't worry. Go back to the video. Okay. We're looking at what the concept called aliasing, and we said that this is has this has to do with uh, different uh, variables being assigned to the same object. So that once the time we try to change, we want to say that in a mutable kind of data structure, anytime we want to change, we want to mutate. Uh, for example, we say that A, say let's say A equals to one, two, three, four, five, six. B is equals to A. So A is equals equals B, which is true. Which we have already defined, and also the identity check, identity card check is A is B is equals to true. Now we want to change, want to mutate, want to work on B, want to change some values in B. How do we do that? We are going to use indexing. So we, we call the index of B, which is the first index, which is capital A. And we also do the same thing for, for the second index, which is one. And by the time we put it capital A and B, which to change one, two, three, four, five. Six of B. So by the time we change it and call it out, it's going to give us A, B, three, four, five, six. And by the time we say, okay, now we have turned something on B, let's call out A. If we can call out A, now it will also be the same value as B. So you can see it's actually that's what aliasing does. It does what it's for mutable types, mutation does not break aliasing. So a and B are still the same object because we mutated what B. I don't know if you understand this concept now. So is it is it the um, the indexing that makes it aliasing? No, it's it's not the index that, that makes it aliasing. Okay, this is what makes it aliasing. This is this is the this is when the aliasing takes place. This is the object that we are we are putting. Look at what it is. A is equal okay. to one, two, three, four, five. So B, that same B is equal to the value of A. Okay. So that's what makes it analyze. This is what is analysis now. Okay. Thank okay. you very much for getting there. So the next thing we're going to look at is is going to be list as function arguments. List as function arguments. Okay. So we can see here uh, the first, the very first one is. Uh, Mutate the list inside the function. Let's see how we can do that. How can we mutate a list inside a function before passing? Guys, please pay attention to this. It's very important. Uh, first of all, let's see how we can make this work for us. So the very first example is going to be mutate the list inside the function. So uh, we define a we define a variable letters outside first. This I don't know what is this particular variable called. I can remember what is this particular the variable the uh, the variable that is passed before we start a function what is it called is it local or global variable it's global global variable well done well done who said that I think it's, we are making we are going we are making progress so it's global because it has been defined outside the function itself so let's continue. So let's see how we can make this work for us. So we define this particular one. We are going to add upper cases to this. And why are we adding upper cases to this? Because we just want to see how we can actually mutate the list inside this function. This is this list outside. We want to use inside here to play with it. We want to use inside here, inside this function, and deal with it outside. Okay. So let's see how we can make that possible. So we define a function. I say add upper cases. List of letters is the parameter that we are passing and we want to mutate it. And by the time we do that, the list of letters, okay, dot insert. Remember, insert comes with the indexing of it. So by the time we call out the index of it and said, okay, uh, this is how we want to make it work for us. We now said, okay, this is uh, A, we want to change it to A, we want to change it to B, and we want to change it to C. So by the time we call the function with the list, add upper case and letters here, these letters here, this particular letters here, is actually what referring to what this one here, this particular list here. But inside of this, I could have decided to use this list of letters as what 
still letters. It doesn't mean anything. I can also decide to make it A. But as far as you have defined this function to say that this is what you should do, you should insert in on the insert index in index of one, you should in the, in, insert a capital letter A. In index of three, you should insert B. Index of five, you should index C. So by the time we say, okay, let's call it out and let's see how we can make it work for us. You can see here, it does the thing for us. It changes it for us. This was before. This was this is the first print statement is before passing the function. So you can see it gives us A, B, C as we want. The next one is one we do what we pass before. This one is this one is a typo error. This one is after what passing to the word function. So you can see on on the index of a, one, you can see a capital letter A has been added, and the index of three, capital B has been added, and C. Uh, on the legs of five, capital C has also been added. I don't know if you see. So, so this is saying that list as a function argument. So we are using this list as this particular function word argument. I don't know if you understand what has just happened now. I'm using the list as a function argument. Why am I, use, how am I using the list as a function argument? Because inside this, this was already defined as a list. And inside this particular list, I'm using it as a function argument that's inside this parameter i'm using the list as a function argument so uh that's the way i can actually explain it if you have any question you can always unmute yourself and talk to me i'm always there to answer so once we call out letters itself if you now say okay let's call out the letters you can see it has changed the letters itself okay so that's the very first one so when you pass a non-primitive type as a function parameter they pass by reference. They, they pass as the same word object. If you mutate the parameter inside the function, the original list will be mutated. That is exactly, exactly what we have. So immediately we pass that particular thing inside this particular function. This is inside the function. The original list, which was letters, has been what mutated. So you can see it has changed to capital small a, capital A, small b, capital B, small c, and capital C. So let's see. Okay. Hello, sir. Okay, ask your question. Ask your question, sir. Please, uh, can you go back uh, up a little? I, I am up. I am up here. Okay. You put list of letter as the input and uh, argument. Yes, sir. So, okay. What I want to ask again is this. Like when you put the list of letters, mm -hmm. the input, then you are uh, like insert. So I don't really get that. Okay. This, 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 okay, continue. Is it possible that for index, indexes that doesn't have, that already have a number values, can we insert on it as well? Or is it not possible? Uh -uh. It's very possible now, but the other one will be. That's what I don't know. If you remember when we're, we're, we're dealing with list now, we can decide to put it in that position. So any value that was in that position will automatically shift to a space. Okay. It will shift in index. Like, for example, if you had inserted, this is where this thing was now. B was in one. B, the okay. index of B here was one. But since you said one here, it has A has now taken, capital A has taken the place of B. Okay, for my first question. Yes. Now the first question is just trying to I'm just trying to put in an argument here. This argument here, this particular parameter is also is referencing the letters itself because by the time you do anything for the letters here, now you are calling out this function add underscore upper k upper underscore cases. The thing that you are putting here is letters, right? Now we are just like saying this is a, a global variable. I'm putting in letters. But inside these letters, I want you to do exactly what I've said for this list of letters. I don't know if you understand what I just said. So anything I put, anything that is inside here, even though I, even though I had put, even though I put this place as, uh, maybe I change this thing to maybe uh, A, maybe I change this thing to maybe Python itself. I say Python is equal to A, B, C. By the time I put Python here, 
is going to take the same action, the argument here, as a what that is the concept of positional function argument, list as a function argument. So by the time you put in anything here, anything you put in here, you could have also decided to use letters here. It could have not mattered at all. So you could have used letters. Now say letters dot insert this, letters dot insert this. You could have still given you the same thing. Okay? Okay. okay. So it, it's it's the same thing. It's actually the same thing. Okay? okay. It's, going, it's going to give you the same thing. So now the next thing is going to be realizing the let the list inside the function. Realizing the list inside the function. So you can see here, uh, this was before we passed the function A, B, C, A, B, C, and uh, let's say uh, define add underscore package is list of letters. So we are reassigning, and let's see what it will give us. So list of letters equals to X, Y, and Z. Let's see what it will give us. So we call the, op the, call the function with the list, and we add it as we did for the former word. For this particular word, we are just we are not inserting anything. We're just saying list of letters is equals to X, Y, and Z. This means so so. Hello, Mr. Funso, you want to ask a question? Okay. No, sorry, it was a mistake. I was not a mistake, sorry. Okay, okay, sir. So by the time we call, out, we call it out, you can see here, it doesn't do what, it doesn't work. Realizing the list inside the word, the function it doesn't do what it doesn't do what change why when you pass a non-primitive type list as a function parameter the pass by reference that the pass as the same object if you reassign the parameter inside the function python will create a new list object inside the function original list will not be changed the original list will not be changed compared to the other one that the original list was what changed when you are trying to when you are trying to reassign re reassign is going is not going to change the original list it's not that it has not changed but it has not changed the original list in which you are referring to okay so that's the concept of uh, original list will not be changed when you are re assigning when you are reassigning you want to change maybe you wanted to change this list of letters into what into x capital x y and z that is the letters itself it will not do what change the original list <laughs> okay so at this particular point i would like to i could have liked to start this matrix operation but right now i can actually tell you that i don't know what i i I, I don't know what I actually put inside my mouth. I think I just took a little value and my stomach is actually being upset right now. So I've been trying to force myself to continue the class. And I could have loved to sh show you this matrix operation right now and also show you the results of the assignment that I gave yesterday. But right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. But let's just, I don't know my stomach, I don't know how to really say, but can, can, I, can I beg to stop here tonight? Okay, sir, no problem. What? Just post the video for us on time. No problem. Okay, uh, okay. Metrics could have been something wonderful. It's, you know, metrics is more of like the list of lists. Uh, you're trying to, let me just show you something, okay? Uh, you can see uh, nested lists. You can see things here. Uh, you can see one, two, three, four. One, two, three is a particular uh, nested list, the first nested list, the second one, the third one. It could have been something that we, we, I would like to do as well, but let's just calm it down and do it in the next class. But uh, ah, I wish I could. I don't know how I'm going to do, but let me just. Ah. Okay. Don't worry, uh, we'll continue the next class. Okay, this is something. Okay, let me just show you before we even. Let me just show you the results, my own way of solving uh, the assignment itself. Uh, this was the sum. I uh, did sum of lists. I reference a list in any of any, maybe I will need a list in the future. So I reference a parameter, a list, and I give it summation to sum up zero. And, and I said, I look through each of these lists. When I look through for i in a list, I said, control the integer. So, for example, what if your list has a, a string? 
So that's why I did it here. I changed that particular string and I said, okay, if it's, up, if it's a string, for example, your list is, for example, A here. What if it's A? What should I do? That means it's going to cost error. So I was checking it to control to, for it to be an integer. So if this uh, particular, I'm casting that particular string, if it's a digit, it should do what? It should add the summation plus equals to I. By the time it does that, it's going to return summation, which is going to give us the first, the very first answer. So that could have been a nice way. And this was this is my own way of solving it. Yours is simpler enough. There's no problem. But I was just trying to say, what if in that your list it has A? One of the things you are going to learn as a programmer is oh my stomach is something that you have to look at, try and catch. For example, when you get to a particular stage, what if it does this? What should I do? What if as I'm coding this, someone just someone just had to put input and made a mistake and add something that is not supposed to be in that list? What should I do? So by the time we get into a particular known as error handling, we're going to see that when it comes to error handling and also uh, exceptions. So you're going to see that as well. So that's where I can actually try to stop here for tonight. I will decide, I will maybe on Wednesday, maybe we'll start the class early or maybe we can start it by eight and try to finish up this. I really want to finish up this list so that we can get it done. Okay, so I would like to, I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, let me just, any, uh, I have to. Any questions, Ogas? All right. None for me, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys. I really have to. Go. I think it's a mango serve. I, I don't know if it was ripe enough. But I just took it and just changed my whole body system. I wish I took it after the class. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right, so. So go with you, sir. 